The Hollow. <clears throat> I'm scared, Shara says, looking around at the trees. Empty branches reach out of the darkness like skittle hands. Those hands scratched and tore at our custom as we ran here. I lost my warrior shoe. Shara lost her cat ears. We lost our flashlight and most of our candy. And Jack's ghost costume is in latter. I'm just as terrified as Sarah. If all I can do not to curl up and cover my face till morning, would I have to take care of Jack? There's nothing to be scared of, I said. It's just the hollow. We walk by it every day. Every day, yes, but this is Halloween night. Shara whines. You know the hollow is haunted. They say if you play in this wood, some kids will come play with you. And they never let you leave. You become the ghost like them. That's why I don't go in the hollow. Are the ghosts going to get OD? Jack asked, looking up at me. He insisted on bringing his wild dog trick or treating with us as we walked by the hollow. OD heard something move in the forest and bolt into the darkness. Jack chases Audi, I chases Jack, and my friend Sarah chases me. Are the ghosts going to get us? No way, little bro. There's no such thing as ghosts. Jack doesn't look as if he believes me. He just let's just find Audi and go home. We start walking, stopping every few minutes to untangle Jack's costume from the branches. Strange sounds follow us. The whispering of movement in the dead leaves on the ground. The creak of pent branches. A snapping twig. My nerves are just about to snap when we hear it a faint barking. It's Odie. Jack starts to run. Sarah and I run after him. Our hands off to protect our face from the tree's claws. Suddenly, we burst into a clearing, a clearing where nothing grows except for a grano, a gnarled thorn per bush. The moon give the, gives the place a cold glow. It's strangely quiet, quiet. Sarah's eyes are wide and she's shaking. We wait in silence. Then we hear the laughing, distant as first, but growing louder. Suddenly, a boy about Jack's age appears from behind a bush, laughing and running. He wears pants bunched up just below his knees, long socks, and, lo and a large, standard white shirt. Sarah screamed. Odi! Jack takes off toward the bush. Odie jumps from behind it, see Jack, and start running toward him. The two meet in the middle of the clearing, and Jack hugs Odie so tightly that I think the dog might might burst. Thank you for finding a dog, I said to the boy. The boy nods. Up close, I see that his skin is very pale. He has black circles around his eye and he looked very hungry. Wow, great costume, Sarah says. Who are you supposed to be? A ghost, he replied. Should you be out here by yourself, I asked. Where do you live? I'm not alone, he said with a laugh and begins to dance around the thorn bush. The wind picks up and I think I can hear children laughing. But I can't be sure. Would you stay and play with me for a while? Odi barks and wag his tail. Kiss, you are totally creeping me out, Sarah says. Can we? Jack looks excited. Odi really likes him. No, Sarah yells before hissing in my ear. That house the ghosts get you. You play with them and you never leave. It's just a kid trying to freak us out, I said. Look, it's late. We have a long night and we just want to go home. Do you know the way back to the road? The wind picks up again and this time, I'm almost sure I can hear something like children laughing. 
The boy tilts his head as if he's thinking really hard. Then he shrugs, sighs, and with a sad smile says, Okay, you let me play with your dog so I can show you the way out. He quickly walks into the forest, moving between the trees at thought he knows the position of every branch. We scramble to keep up. I keep hearing what sound what sounds like laughter behind us, but I can be sure I start to move a little faster. Why are you in the hall by yourself? I ask, mainly just to listen to something besides scary noises. I just go there, I don't know why, he says. I it's not a bad place. I can hear other kids sometimes. There's always playing, but I can't find them. I like listening to them because it makes me feel like I'm not alone. I feel sad for the kid being all by himself on Halloween. No wonder he was trying to scare us. He probably just want to want some attention. I decide that one we are we are we are on the road. We'll take him to a field house to trick or treat before taking him home. The laughter on the wind follow us. Sometimes it seems so close, and other time it's far behind. I stop a few times and look around for what might be making the sounds. I don't see anything, but the experience on Sarah's face says, says she hears the laughter too. Jack and Ollie keep happily trucking along so we don't say anything. Then the boy stops at the port and points ahead. I can see the yellow glow of the street light. Of the street light. It might be the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Awesome, Sarah says as she pushes ahead. Thank you, I say as we pass the boy. Jack waved goodbye and all the box. When I step onto the sidewalk, sidewalk, I turn around. The boy is still there. His face just visible. The I motion for him to join us. He gives me that sad smile again and step back into the darkness. Hey kid, I called out, realizing that I don't know his name. I go to the edge of the woods where the boy just stood, but he is gone. I hear children's laughter all around me, but no one is there. Okay, thank you for listening.